I want to send a message to every survivor of sexual assault. Don't let anyone silence your voice. You have a right to be heard, and you have a right to be believed. We're with you. I don't know how people are going to take this. I don't know what they're going to think after all these months and years why I've come forward. All these stories are floating around, uh, different stories of what really happened, of what people think happened, and I was tired of everybody putting their own spin on it. Juanita Broderick's story begins in 1978. She was a registered nurse who had started her own nursing home in Van Buren, Arkansas. Bill Clinton was the state attorney general who was running for governor. I believe the people expect me to be ready to be governor if I'm elected. I thought he was just something that was really going to be good for Arkansas. But he was a very charismatic man that had bright ideas for our state. Roderick says she met Clinton for the first time when he made a campaign stop at her nursing home in the spring of 1978, when these pictures were taken. While he was there visiting, he said, if you're ever in the Little Rock area, please drop by our campaign office. And he said, well, be sure and call me when you come in. Call down to the campaign office. Roderick says not long after that conversation, she did go to Little Rock for a nursing home meeting held at the Camelot Hotel, now the Doubletree. She says she checked into the hotel and the next morning called Clinton campaign headquarters. She says she was told Clinton was at his apartment and to call him there. I did call and ask him if he was going to be in the headquarters that day. And he said no, that he didn't plan to be there. He says, why don't I just meet you for coffee in the Camelot coffee shop? But Broderick says Clinton called later. She thinks it was around 9 in the morning and asked if they could meet in her hotel room because there were reporters in the coffee shop. So you thought this was going to be a business meeting? Yes, I did. Yes, I really did. I felt, uh, I felt a real uh, friendship toward this man, and I didn't really feel any, any uh, danger in him coming to my room. And it was a real pretty window view that looked at down at the river. And he came around me and sort of put his arm over my shoulder to point to this little building and said that he was real interested if he became governor to restore that little building. And then all of a sudden, he turned me around and started kissing me. And that was a real shock. I just told him, no, you know, please don't do that. Then he tries to kiss me again. And the second time he tries to kiss me, he starts biting on my lip. minute. He starts to uh, bite on my top lip and I try to pull away from him. And then he forces me down on the bed. And I just was very frightened. And I tried to get away from him and I told him no. I didn't want this to happen. But you wouldn't listen to me. I told him, please don't. He was such a different person at that moment. He was just a, a vicious, awful person. And I was even to the point where I was getting very noisy, you know, yelling, and to, you know, to please stop. But that's when he would press down on my right shoulder, and he would, uh, bite on my lip and then he got up and straightened himself and I was crying at the moment and uh, he walks to the door and calmly puts on his sunglasses and his, before he goes out the door he says you better get some ice on that and he turns and went out the door. <laughs>